there you go. On that note, I want to dive into a super sensitive and important topic, which is actually confusion. And this has been one thing that I do really fall put on us. And there's there's a plan coming here for an article follow up, especially as we get close to CAPS 2, which is coming. And, and I'm going to talk a little bit about what I can about what the improvements are, what we've learned about how machine learning and machines approach chess in terms of the information we can tease out, how well you play with your knights and your bishops and some really cool stuff that can be insights for people. So CAPS 2 is going to be even better, but let's bring up CAPS and talk a little bit about it right now. Um, we've got a full screen capture right here. Uh, for those that are with us, again, I am reading chat. Please save your questions. If you've got some hard-hitting questions for the Q&A portion about cheat detection and other things, please uh, please save them. So um, we've we've got our accuracy percentage, and, and my producer's working on a little bit of a zoom in there, which is awesome. Here we go. So you can see in this particular game, I lost. I lost and still had 96.2. God, story of my life. To 98.3, right? So a lot of people look at that at times and they think that that means cheating. They think that 98.3 is a game that only the world's best could play, so certainly someone who's not the world's best can't play that kind of game in a blitz game, right? So again, superficially, that type of opinion has been brought to actually a lot of a lot of us here at chess.com, and I and I faced it directly because it's confusion, because we launched a product that had a a score given of accuracy, right? And that the natural human thing to deter from that is, well, 100% must be perfect, right? 98% is close to perfect, right? So not untrue. But what I want to clarify is that CAPS in and of itself, first of all, when you run it, it's running on our server, and the default depth that most people get it at, which is what I just got it at, is actually running at a superficial analysis of 18 and 7 seconds at times rather than a full report that gives you that gives you a massive amount of time. If I run this depth report right now and actually wait for 5 minutes, which very few of you do that, raise your hand, you know you're guilty, okay? Um, it would actually change both the depth and the specific outputs here. So first thing I would challenge you to do is understand that the basic purpose of CAPS was to give you a very quick hit into the blunders made and to change something in chess that was very hard for new players to understand. This is the main message I'm trying to deliver with CAPS for team members watching that we can cut this as a video to share. We face so many new members to the chess community with our domain name. Awesome. We're super fortunate, right? That a lot of times we underappreciate how many new people are playing chess and, and don't understand the chess ranking system. If I say someone is 1,600 or 2,700, they go like, out of what? 2,700 out of 3,000? Well, not exactly. It's on an ELO band. And the ELO band has a calculus that's designed to bring down the curve to prevent you from getting better than people down low. So you can't just rating farm to get over 3,000. <gasps> right? That's Okay, so that's one thing about ELO. Okay, so how does it work then to measure people? So what is a 2,700 then? Does that mean you're the best? Well, actually, no. People have gotten over 2,800, but eventually they're going to slow down. It's not a true indicator of Magnus Carlsen's strength that he can't reach 2,900. You know why? Because he can't gain rating points anymore from 2,600. So how good really is he? Right? Oh my God, I could go on. So we try to explain to people, well, how good is my individual game? How did I play, right? And you can't really explain this to people with a rating system in chess, especially when it's measured and limited on the strength of your opponent, okay? Get with me. So what CAPS is, is a self-measurement between you and whatever engine strength you delegate. That's why I first said you can get a stronger engine if you run three to five minutes server side. But even at a superficial level, it's a pure comparison, not based on how hard your opponent's moves were to find, not based on maybe the opening that you knew was super deep, so gave you a higher score than before. Your opponent blunders all the time, which just makes it easy for you to get a higher score, right? None of that is really relevant to how well it's ba That's all like things that are outside of your control. But a cap score is giving you a measurement of zero to whatever engine we had. Let's say the engine is perfect. Okay, how well you matched up. It's not necessarily T1 quick hit analysis, but a little bit, a blunder check and to tell you, and again, here's where I'm getting to the score. A new player can understand, oh, it's ranked zero to 100. That's like I got an A. Everybody in the world knows a scoring system from school. We all do. Oh, okay, that's like I got a B. That's like I got a C, right? 
And so what we did this as a feature, not as a cheat detection tool. We can like cap it and clip it and ship it right there to people wondering. Caps is not chess.com's cheat detection. Zero. Caps has zero to do with chess.com's cheat detection. In fact, if anybody is like thinking they're developing a cheat detection tool based on any one game approach or based on analysis that doesn't take indicators of other forms of measurement of how hard the moves were to find, they're doing something that's superficial and reckless. And if you are out there making cheat accusations based on your opponent's cap score, you're wrong. And it's not really fair and it is against our bylaws. So why do we have it? Again, it was a way to help people who don't understand the chess ranking system in a snapshot view how well they played quickly in an individual game. Doesn't even have the deepest engine. It's a zero to 100 marker that doesn't totally take into, into account how well your opponent played, which is what you have to do if you're, weathering, if you're evaluating whether someone cheated. And again, the ELO system is too complicated for people to understand quickly, especially the audience that we bring in with our domain name. So this is the long-winded goal of this show here, is that caps forevermore, as of this point, should not be considered part of your cheat detection, and do not use it to accuse people for cheat detection. Now, yes, if someone understands a little more about our algorithm, statisticians out there, I know we have very smart people in the audience, and if you aggregated a cap score over someone's 100 games... And over those 100 games, took into account some of the other secret things, that, the sauce things we do that can take into account strength and difficulty of some stuff, you might, you might be getting closer, okay? But a lot of reckless accusations have been made, including by parents of young, talented players. They know who they are. And they continue to be aggressive and accuse things and make themselves a vigilante cheat detection based on information that is actually not accurate. And again, you can blame chess.com, but why do we have the score there? Again, we this is this is a blog that is coming when we release Caps 2 to combine with this video. But the goal of this was to address. Caps 2 is to help people who don't understand the chess ranking system quickly how they did and to allow people to quickly see the key moments of the game. Because what we can evaluate quickly with Caps, even at the superficial engine, and again, remember I said if you want a deeper Caps, run the longer one, what you can't evaluate is, the, is the, the move evaluation swing. Someone made a move that changed the evaluation by this. We can classify that as a blunder, and it affects the cap score. But, but that is purely indicative of, of an individual game, not something that can ever be used in, in, a, in a respectful way to make cheat accusations. It's not a part of Chess.com's cheat detection, and it is mostly designed... I'm sorry this is disappointing, to help people who don't understand the chess rating system quickly, whether they got an A or a D on their game. And that's really what it's about. It's kind of a fun tool, all right? It's not a part of our cheat detection. Danny, out.